some of you um, regular contest players when it comes to radio, and just to remind you, our click and win contest got about four hours, or no, it's four days and 14 hours, so about a little over four and a half days yet to uh, get in on this opportunity, and you might be a winner. Uh, Of course, it involves Wendell Tire, and we'd like to remind you that winter driving is here. The last couple of days have been okay, but there were a few not long ago that were somewhat dicey, and we'll see some more. Let Corby, Craig, and Jeff at Wendell Tire Factory help you prepare with winter tires, chains, batteries, and wiper blades. Always the right tire, always the right price. Trust what you love to Wendell Tire Factory. So again, you go to our, our NewsRadio1310.com website, and you'll see a little uh, little icon there near the top of the page, Loyal Listener Club. And if you drag your mouse over that, then you'll see uh, another board come up, and it says Contests on there, and you can check that out. 844, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We have 22 right now on our way. Most of the weather this week is just looks like winter doldrums, but we are expecting some snow later in the week. In fact, one of those days it says a 100% chance, so it's likely we're going to get to pelted with something before the before the week is actually over. I shared with you just before we, we entered the break uh, this story. I pulled this down from Washington Examiner this morning. Headline, report, U.S. lets United Nations pick which Syrians come to America. But 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 they're all vetted, and they're all nice people, and, and, and if you don't say so like I do, then you're mean-spirited, and we here in Twin Falls aren't that kind of people. In other words, if you're not part of we, then you don't belong here. They do, you don't, right? I mean, you know, even though you may have been born in the United States and your family may have been here for generations and your family may have gone off and fought in all of the nation's wars, you're a bigot and a racist if you don't accept these people, right? We've been hearing all of this for how many months now? Going back to last April since this really became a hot-button issue. A new report, the writer says, Paul Bedard, great writer for the Washington Examiner, a new report on the Syrian refugee resettlement program reveals that the United Nations, not U.S. officials, initially pick and choose who can move to the U.S. and even become an American citizen. Did you know this? Has anybody on the local level told you this? What's more, the vetting system used by the U.S.-funded United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees is wide open to rampant fraud, raising the specter that potential terrorists could buy their way into the U.S. Did you hear that? Buy their way. B-U-Y, as in ka-ching, ka-ching, purchase their way into the United States, according to the analysis from the Center for Immigration Studies. The report focused on a little-known path to how refugees get into America. The United Nations makes the first pick, not the State Department. Under the system, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees considers those seeking to come before turning that list over to the U.S. to consider. Quote, out of the 4 million-plus registered Syrian refugees in the region, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees has so far submitted 22,427 cases to the U.S. for resettlement consideration. Of those, about 2,000 were accepted last year. The U.S. is welcoming Syrian refugees only from the 22,427 who made it through the UNHCR referrals. That, again, is the acronym for United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, and I should say unquote, too. The report raised two huge issues. First, it found that the U.N. system is simply overloaded. Just consider this. Since there are over 4 million refugees and just about 2,000 staffers for the U.N., each interviewer is responsible for vetting anywhere between two and 3,000 refugees each. Now, I don't know about the United Nations. I'm guessing they have a 40-hour work week or even less. It's got a lot of Europeans in it, and they don't like to work. Frenchmen especially, you've got all of these people who are showing up then for 30 hours a week, perhaps, taking long coffee breaks, and if you subtract holidays and weekends and vacations and the like, they're at work maybe, what, 200 days a year, and they've got to screen 3,000 refugees? Are they? Something's not right here. 848, Bill Colley with you. I'll get to my caller in just a moment. Please, hold on. And insiders have fretted about various types of fraud where people can lie or pay their way through the UN system. It's 21. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on KLIX. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, and the, the rest of the story is this high commissioner uh, refugees was vice president 
and President Socialist International, which is a, another name for communists. And of course, the UN has always been anti-American. It's pro-communist, pro-socialist, totalitarian since its very inception. And even Alger Hiss, who was the first secretary general, was uh, convicted as a communist spy years ago. They want to destroy America, so that's why we're getting all Syrian refugees. We just had another Syrian uh, uh, person in Turkey uh, killed a bunch of people tourists, uh, just yesterday. Or, and so, I mean, folks, we better wake up. These are the kind of people that are coming here, and you notice that they're all young military age men. And if you look at any of the videos of the refugees in Europe, and even those that are coming into Twin Falls, they're not bringing families, by and large. They're bringing young military age people. So what's the what's the goal here is to create jihad or just overpopulate us until we accept Sharia law. And there's another story this morning I came across about how this works in various parts of the world, and it, uh, a study that was done uh, in England, and it says that for the first 6,000 years, just about everyone who lived in England over the last 6,000 years had similar DNA. And that even included Norman conquests and later Germanic tribes who came because they actually represented very little of it. And now they are so overwhelmed with this that, that it, it's, it's literally tearing their culture apart, that an ancient culture which will last only a few more years. Well, that'll, that's exactly what's going to happen here, Bill, too. These, they largely don't assimilate. And those people out there that think we don't have already some problems here uh, with the uh, men here harassing some of the female clerks in stores and all kinds of things of that nature. And we have domestic violence, but, of course, the women will not testify against their husbands. We know this is happening right here in, in River City. So, well, folks, we need to stop this and get hold of your legislators, the governor, and stop the funding and stop the United Nations from destroying our country. Thank you. Thank you much for the telephone call, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. This fellow named Schwartz out of England did this study. I was reading about it this morning before I got on air, and and he said, for, for thousands of years, you go back 6,000 years, England and Scotland and really the whole British Isles have been pretty much populated by the same people. And then he said, if you look at all of the, the Norman invasions and then even the Germanic peoples who came over, you know, the, the Angles and the Jutes and the Saxons, he said, perhaps they only accounted for about 250,000 people over the course of a few thousand years. That's not a lot to add to the population. Now, though, they are just being overrun and overwhelmed. And he, he measures this and says, you can have gradual immigration. But if you have this wholesale, and Germany's seeing it too, it's not long before everything comes collapsing down. There's a tipping point, and they've, they've long ago reached it. 852, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. It's 24 right now. Of course, you're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. You're, do, you're up next. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Bill. Bill, uh, tonight the egomaniac in chief that you said, used the name Barry Sotero is going to dance in the end zone, spike the ball, but one thing he's not going to talk about is our Marine and our minister that's in a prison in Iran. He's not going to talk about that. And he will not pardon uh, Dwight and Stephen Hammond either. I thank you much for the telephone call, 736-0300. He actually is going to have somebody there, though, representing Syrian refugees. Daily Caller has this, refugees and immigrants who will not, though, attend the State of the Union address. First Lady, the writer says, uh, Russ Reed, Michelle Obama invited a Syrian refugee to join her as her personal guest to the State of the Union Tuesday. How do they go about doing this? Did she go down to like the docks and say, hmm, I'll take that one? No, nah, no, nah, they wouldn't do that because there's too many parallels to something that still upsets them after 300 years. There are, however, many other refugees who will not be there, and for good reason. And they've compiled a list. For instance, the Sarnayev brothers. Uh, they were refugees, of course. Well, one of them is no longer with us. Uh, he was uh, shot dead, and then the other one was shot up, and then he was convicted and will die sooner or later for the, the crimes that he committed in Boston, Massachusetts. So they will not be there. In April 2015, Abdir Rahman Sheikh Mohammed, a Somali-born U.S. citizen, was charged by the Department of Justice for wanting to go to a military base in Texas and kill three or four American soldiers execution-style. 
Uh, he came from Somalia as a refugee in 1998. So he's indisposed also for the moment, so he can't sit there with Michelle Obama. Ali Shakri Amin, a Sudanese-American teenager, ran a pro-Islamic State Twitter account and was charged with providing material support to terrorists. He does not yet have early release, so he cannot sit with Michelle Obama. Bosnian couple Ramiz Hadzik and Sadina, and I guess she pronounces it Unkic Hadzik, were charged with conspiring to pursue or provide ISIS and al-Qaeda linked al-Nusra with money and military equipment in February 2015. Uh, they are not yet out on parole, so uh, apparently they will not be sitting with Michelle Obama. In November 2010, Somalian-American Mohammed Osman Mohammed was arrested for plotting to bomb a Christmas tree lighting ceremony in Portland. Uh, that would be Oregon, close to us, and not Maine. So they're all over the country. And this list goes on and on and on and on. Do you need any more evidence? And you know, you always have to sit here and qualify and say, well, they're not all bad people. We know that, okay? We can read and write. The problem is, <laughs> what about the ones who are? Why do we, and I go back to this analogy, I've used it before. When the gun control nuts start talking, they always say, one death is too many. Therefore, we have to take away your firearms. All right. When you got a guy and his wife who run into a building in San Bernardino and shoot 14, 15 people dead, is that too many? How about the little girl who was blown in half on the Boston Marathon route? Is that too many? I, I, come on, lefty. Give me a call one of these days. Put on your man pants and give me a call and explain you know, your rationale on all of this. I've been waiting over a year now to hear one of you tell me what, what logically drives your desire to destroy this country, to destroy this culture, and tell me why you hate it so much. It's 856. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Do want to point out that we still have what you'd call a great culture in this part of the world. I'll share a couple of thoughts on that in a few minutes. Speaking of which, Kelton Hatch from Idaho Fish and Game, uh, he'll be joining us, an outdoorsman himself, during the next hour of the program, and he takes some of your telephone calls. You're up next, and you're on the air. Yeah, Bill, just a quick question. Uh, this is Kent over by Bertie. Um, do you like m ms As in candy? Yeah. Haven't had them in years, but they used to be pretty good. Well, you know, uh, I heard a really good analogy the other day. Got a bowl full of m ms here. They have about 5,000 in there. And there's only a hundred of them that are laced with arsenic. Um, how many would you like? <laughs> well done. Thank you very much for that call. <laughs> I, 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 none, to be honest with you. I don't need any M&Ms for the time being. 8.57 now. We do want to point out, since we're going to be talking hunting and fishing in the next segment of the program, I want to mention our great friends at High Desert Meat Processing here in Twin Falls, where they process one animal at a time. What you bring in is exactly what you're going to get back. Darren Van Horn, the owner of High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls, he, he's got more than 30 years doing this. Visit High Desert Meat Processing on Facebook, and you can see the reviews of other customers. Or give High Desert Meat Processing a call for all of your wild game and domestic processing needs. The number is 734-9949. High Desert Meat does in-house smoking. Nothing gets shipped out. Specialty meats such as jerky, pepperoni, salami, summer sausage, kielbasa, breakfast sausage, brats, Polish dogs, hot dogs, and much more. USDA approved. Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. 734-9949. And I'd like you to keep hearing this program. That's why I want you to give Dr. Christine Pick up a call. Doctor of Audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology and Rupert. 1218 9th Street, Unit Number 2, telephone number 208-312-0957, or online at mountharrisonaudiology.com. Diabetes and hearing loss are linked. If you or a loved one struggles with diabetes control, it could also be affecting your hearing. The inner ear is incredibly sensitive to changes in your blood supply. High blood sugars can cause hearing changes. Be sure to have your hearing screen today. Kelton Hatch, expected in the next hour of the program from Idaho Fish and Game. Right here on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. It's 23. News from Fox, though, in between.